Hi, this is Sandra from Source Outreach Ministries. Welcome today. Uh, we're doing a series called Overcoming the Flesh. And today our study is going to be on fear and anxiety, number 16. And the definition for this fear and anxiety is anxiety has been defined as a feeling of fear, dread, or apprehension that arises without a clear or appropriate justification. Okay. What does the Bible say about fear and anxiety? Well, in Psalms 34, 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So if you put your trust in the Lord, he can help you overcome all the fears, anxiety that you have, the problems that you have in your life. He will help you get through it. You will have a uh, peace inside your heart and body instead of the anxiety and the fear that overcomes us when we don't have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay. Uh, scriptures to live by. Psalms 118.6. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with a vengeance with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. See, if you trust in God, he's always walks with you through your life and he knows what you're going through before you even know what's going to be taking place. So this is a trust and faith relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. Okay. And then it says in Isaiah, Isaiah 35, 4, like I just said, the Lord is on my side. You don't walk alone in this life when you have Jesus Christ with you. And it says, I will not fear. What can man do to me? So in essence, in life, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, you should have no fear. You should have no anxiety. You may have moments of uncomfortableness, moments of uh, things that pass through your life from other people's situations or even your own. But if you trust in Jesus, he's going to show you the way. He's going to show you an answer, how to get out of the situation, how to make it better. Um, sometimes he will just make it go away. Sometimes he will bring in goodness instead of things you're thinking that are negative, like a situation you may think will be really, really bad. And then he turns it around and then it's really um, good. It's settled. It's uh, that problem is no longer in your mind because he has taken care of it. It's just amazing what the Lord will do for us when we give our life to him and follow in the path that he gives us in our life. Okay, so these are some situations I'm showing you based on the world. We have fear, anxiety, they have down here, animal phobia, situational phobia, social phobia, panic and angina phobia, P. TSD that so many people have, even children, okay? Generalized anxiety disorder and depression, okay? So much of that going on in this world, okay? So signs of anxiety, do you see this up here, worrying about everything. Uh, you're worrying about nothing. <laughs> uh, worry about future events. You're trembling. Your chest gets tight. You have excessive worrying. Your stomach hurts. You you avoid people. You just want to just go be in your room and cover your head in a blanket. Uh, you lose your appetite, tenseness, uh, not able to sleep. It's just something, panic attacks, okay? Panic attacks where you're breathing in a paper bag or you go to the hospital and they treat you for a heart attack thinking you're having a heart attack. But as, as they give you um, medication to slow down, like uh, some people give... Uh, out of van, things like that, when you're in the ER, when you're having um, a panic attack. And then mind reading, your mind is just going on and on and on with all these different thoughts, okay? Muscle tension, sweating, fear, feeling irritable, you're grouchy, okay? So these are all signs of anxiety. This is where you're so uncomfortable in your body. You just, it's just terrible. And so when you say, okay, that's it, I'm giving my life to Jesus, these things will start to diminish the medications that the doctors have you on, unless you're in a really, really uh, psychological situation, you can get off some of these meds, okay? If it's a really, really uh, mental anxiety kind of stuff that they got to work on with you, you will probably stay on the meds for a while. But 
the more you're with Jesus, these things get better and better and better. See, like over here, you're worrying about if you're going to be a failure, or you're getting angry, you have stress. So all these things, you're mad, you're just in such a negative uh, mode for yourself. Instead of being happy, joyful, and peaceful, uh, all this stuff of the world comes upon you, right? There's a lot of things you can't absorb and handle because you don't have that um, strength okay but with jesus christ as your lord and savior you have his strength in you you have a hedge of protection over you. you have the blood of jesus over you you have the word you can go to the word and read look up uh well, why am i stressed why am i this and there's scriptures that help you to overcome these things okay um on the side of over here on the right for the bible uh says it says do not worry about life what you will eat, what you will drink. People just worry about anything and everything about what your what your about your body, what you're gonna wear. Uh, is not life more than just food and the body, more than clothes? And it says, he says, God says to look at this. Look at the birds in the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? No. Yet the heavenly Father feeds them. The birds find a way to survive because he provides for them seed and different things that birds eat, you know, like worms and bugs and different things. OK, and it says, are you not much more valuable than that? Because we're higher up on the on the um, food chain or whatever you want to call us. You know, the human beings are just one step below the angels. And um, or, yeah, no, their angels are one step below us. We're above the angels. So in essence, um, we have a high level of uh, respect from God. And, and we need to own up to that and understand that once we decide that we're no longer going to roam around in this world and get so much problems, we're going to start to change by giving life our life to Jesus and watch how our life changes, how things no longer are necessary in our life, how the things fall off us of the different people that no longer are going to be in our in our line of friends. Uh, situations are going to change because he's going to bless us in our job, in our finances, in our family. OK, all these things will start to change and you will feel um a peace come over you, you'll feel the joy come over you, you'll feel oh, just more relaxed, you know, yes, you're going to have trials and tribulations, yes, we are here to, that just like Jesus going to have long suffering, but we'll be able to sustain ourselves and go through it, okay, it's not going to get in us, and it's just, we're going to, it's just going to pass through, you know, pass here, but when it's in you, it's just tormenting you, all this stuff, because you don't have the strength, the power, and the knowledge of the word in you, then it's really, really hard, okay? It says, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall, and he won't, okay? Look what look what the Jews did. The Jews, back 2,000 years ago, they were with him, then they were against him. Yes, he punished them. Yes, he destroyed a lot of where their land was. He put them into captivity with really, really mean uh like in egypt with the pharaoh then nebuchadnezzar in babylon yes he made them pay because they didn't believe that he was their father their lord their god and they kept worshiping idols as we do today in the world football people stuff okay we worship other things other than jesus first right you shouldn't be worshiping money or or clothes or people or our children you're supposed to worship the lord those are all simple things that you should diminish that thought like men are just abstained with sports and football they don't even talk to their wife they just watch this game like they're there and they're screaming at the television it's just ridiculous okay back in the day they worship Baal, and he, they gave their children as a sacrifice thinking that they will have a better life. Do you believe that, right? And like what people are doing today is they're aborting their child because they choose they don't want it anymore. That's that's bad too, because that is giving your child, it's like you're giving it away, you're sacrificing your child because you want to go play in the streets or you want to have uh, your career or whatever you want to do. But you didn't think first to take care of yourself, protect yourself, 
so that you wouldn't have a child. I know there's instances of rape and those kind of things, but you just don't get rid of your kid, okay? And if you did, you repent. You repent because we don't know any better when we don't know the Lord. We don't know what's right or wrong, what we should be doing. But once you know about Jesus and the rules and the laws, then those things, if it happens to you, then you're going to have to think of a different way to handle it, okay? And then um, and it says, what the world causes what the Bible tells you, how to handle this fear and anxiety. So in essence, it says, I know the Lord. He is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. And this is in Psalm 16, 8. So if you read the Bible, you start to build up your, your um, strength, your trust, your knowledge, okay? And understanding of who God is, who Jesus is, and the Holy Spirit, once you get baptized in water, the Holy Spirit comes in you, inside you, okay? And he helps and guides you through your life so that the anxiety and the fear will be very minimal, okay? You will be able to sustain it. You will be able to control it. You will be able to diminish it or maybe even get rid of it totally because sometimes life does bring horrible things on us, okay? unexpected things like all of a sudden you have cancer all of a sudden you uh, lost your job of course for a minute you're going to feel wow you're going to feel anxiety you're going to feel stress like what's next but if you just humble yourself and ask god does he ever forsake you does he ever leave you no he always provides and takes care of you no matter what and even if you have a terrible disease put upon you and and that disease brings to you end of life death if you have jesus christ in your life you know you're going to have eternal life with jesus his father and the holy spirit you're going to have eternal life so there's nothing to fear there's nothing to fear but if you don't know jesus yes there's a lot to fear there's a lot to fear folks so i hope you get this message today i hope you understand this and i have um this video for you to watch okay it's 2.30 in the morning and you cannot sleep. You roll from one side to the other. You pound your pillow. Nothing helps. Everyone else sleeps, but not you. And so it's 2.30 in the morning, it becomes 3.30 and you still haven't slept. And anxiety begins to have its way with you. Another hour passes. You cover your head with a pillow. You feel like crying. What a mess. What does all this anxiety mean? All this insecurity, all this trepidation, all this worry, all this restlessness. What does it mean? Well, it means simply this. You are a human being. You're not stupid. You're not emotionally underdeveloped. You're not immature. Your parents didn't fail you. It doesn't mean you failed them. And this is important. It does not mean you're not a Christian. Christians battle anxiety. Jesus did. In the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before his crucifixion, he prayed for the cup of suffering to be taken away from him. And he prayed with such ferocity that, that the capillaries burst and rivulets of, of crimson rolled down his face. Jesus battled anxiety. He faced fears, but he fought through his fears and surrendered them to God and fulfilled his mission. And anxiety did not win. And such is God's plan for you. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate your life. God's plan for you is not a life that is drenched in anxiety. It is his will that you and I learn to live a life that is characterized by calm and not chaos. By peace and not panic. You ever felt nearly swamped in your life? Like, I'm still showing up, but barely. 
I'm making it and I'm smiling, but nobody knows what's really behind this smile. The things I think about some days, I just want to run away from it all. I want to suggest something to you today about the storms of anxiety in your life and the waves and the winds that are blowing in your life. Because man, the winds will blow. They will blow. Absolutely. And the waves will break and they will crash. No doubt about it. There are some things that you're afraid of that make no sense from heaven's perspective. There are some things that are causing you to shut down, they're paralyzing you that are senseless when you put it in the context of who God is in you and what you mean to him. And he says, I want you to train your, your heart to be anxious for nothing. If you're following after God's purpose, you got no reason to ever be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. How, how can, some, can somebody really live a life in which they're anxious for nothing? Do not let yourself be caught in a state of perpetual anxiety. That's what he's saying. It's impossible to lead a life free of anxiety. But we can discover a life that is void of perpetual anxiety. Anxiety comes with life, but it does not have to dominate our lives. You see, anxiety, depression, and unhappiness, they all come from a sense of powerlessness. They all come from a sense of powerlessness. So when you're powerless, you feel anxious. When you're powerless, you feel depressed. When you're powerless, you feel unhappy. So the the idea that that you're powerless over your debts, powerless over the sentence, powerless over the battle, that somehow it's up to you to try to make it happen, that will bring you sadness. It will bring you anxiety. It will bring you... So we only get anxious about something because we're not certain about what the outcome is going to be. Why would you be anxious about something you're sure about? You know, when you're rooting for your favorite team, when it's live and it's happening and they're, and the game is really close and it's down to the last minute and you get anxious about it, it's just an example that, that just is, shows how our emotions operate. You understand the anxiety when, you, when, when it's close and when it's on the edge because you're not sure. But let me ask you something. If you already know and if you're watching, you would have no anxiety. Why? Because you already know the outcome, Right? See, you have no fear and no anxiety when you know the outcome. Well, the outcome of whatever your need is, is my God shall supply it. So when you know the outcome, anxiety leaves you. There's a pathway out of the valley of fret. And God has used the apostle Paul to sketch the map in this passage from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus person would be hard-pressed to find a passage more practical and applicable to our day and age. Wouldn't you agree? So what can we do? Paul lists here four helpful ideas for winning the war on worry. And if you want to move from chaos into calm, consider what Paul says. First, celebrate, celebrate God's goodness. Rejoice in the Lord always, the apostle writes, with chains dangling from that Roman jail cell. Rejoice in the Lord always, he writes, with no penny in his pocket. And perhaps the sound of the footsteps of the executioner in the hallway. Rejoice in the Lord always, he writes, beneath the shadow of Nero and the threat to the church. He says, now just rejoice in the Lord always. His point is, don't meditate on the mess. The more you stare at the problem, the bigger it gets. 
The more you stare at the problem, the bigger it gets. So when you have a problem, lift up your eyes and rejoice in the Lord. The minute the anxiety comes, rather than giving in to the anxiety, you lift up your eyes and you rejoice in the Lord. This was the counsel of the psalmist. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You see the intentionality in those words? I will lift up my eyes. This was a decision that the psalmist made. The apostle Peter is a testimony to this. You remember how when the storm struck the Sea of Galilee, he knew what 10-foot waves could do to a fishing boat. And Peter cried out, Lord, if it's really you, then command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter left the boat and walked on the water to Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid. And he began to what? Sing. As long as he kept his eyes on Christ, he was able to do the impossible. But when he saw the wind and the waves, when he turned his gaze away from Christ, he began to sink. If today you feel like you're sinking, or the next time you feel like you're sinking, lift up your eyes, set your gaze on Christ, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in his sovereignty. Is God greater than your problem? Has God ever faced this problem before? Does God have solutions you've not thought of? Has God got you through these types of things before? Does God have a good track record? Is God strong? Is God sovereign? Is God still on the throne? Is he overall? See how you lift that up? You're rejoicing in the Lord. You're lifting your mind away from the problems, and you're setting your mind on the one who can solve it. Do not meditate on the mess. So you rejoice. That's what it means to rejoice in the Lord. Oh, I've got a great God. I've got a wonderful Father. I rejoice in the Lord. And then the apostle says, having done that, you'll be ready to ask God for help. You've calmed yourself down. Now you ask God for help. Let your requests be made known to God. You see, fear triggers either despair or prayer. So choose wisely. God said, call on me in the day of trouble. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. The path to peace is always paved with prayer. That's why the devil doesn't want you to pray. The path to peace is always paved with prayer. The enemy, Satan, would love to shut down your ability to pray in faith. When you pray and you take a promise of God and you declare it over your life in whatever area, okay, the Bible says to believe you have received it. Worry does not believe that. Anxiety does not believe that. The cares of this world do not believe that. And the enemy will attack anything that you stand in faith for. And he would love, even if in your everyday life, for you to start worrying about things that you never worried about before. When you offer a request to God, do you tell God, now, God, I'm just going to stay around till you get it fixed. Do you need my advice? I'm going to be putting you on the clock. I'm going to check in with you. No. You leave your concern with your heavenly Father. And consequently, where that anxiety has gone, you can now place gratitude. Gratitude. Look what the apostle says. He says, in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Anxiety and gratitude cannot share the same heart. Test me on that. Try it sometime. The next time you're anxious, begin to make a list of things for which you're grateful. Because anxiety and gratitude refuse to share the same heart. So you leave your concerns with him. You fill your heart with gratitude. And then lastly, meditate on good things. Don't let anxious negative thoughts take over your mind. You cannot control your circumstances, but you can control how you think about them. Peace comes from a stream of thinking. From a stream of thinking. Because you could be a Christian, be born again and on your way to heaven, 
but have no peace. Why? Because of what you're thinking, because of what you're meditating on, because of what you're dwelling on, what you're focusing on, what's going through your ear, you know, in between your ears, what's going on in your head in between your ears. Listen, this is why so many Christians fail is because they're trying to obtain and struggling for a victory that Jesus has already given. You see, if, for example, if you think about one of the things he promised he would do for you, is it says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. If your mind is constantly on the fact that God will supply, you will have peace. So you could have all the money you need and not have peace. But you could, you could have an empty bank account and have peace because you believe the promise that he will supply. You see, the peace doesn't come from the money in your account. The peace comes from your thought and your mind focused on what God said he would do and your confidence that he will do it because he's done everything else that he said he would do. Some years ago, I wrote this in a journal. I read it quite often. Today, I will live today. Yesterday has passed. Tomorrow is not yet. I'm left with today. So today, I will live today. Relive yesterday? No. I will learn from it. I will seek mercy for it. I will take joy in it. But I won't live in it. The sun has set on yesterday. The sun has yet to rise on tomorrow. Worry about the future? To what gain? It deserves a glance and nothing more. I can't change tomorrow until tomorrow. Today I will live today. I will face today's challenges with today's strength. I will dance today's waltz with today's music. I will celebrate today's opportunities with today's hope. Today. May I laugh, listen, learn, and love. And if tomorrow comes, may I do it again. The next time that anxiety awakens you at 2.30 in the morning, would you believe what I'm suggesting to you? And that is, it is not God's will that you lead a life of perpetual anxiety. That your heavenly Father will help you. He will help you pull out the roots of your anxiety. It will help you deal with the fears that face you. Thank you for watching this lesson today. I hope that it gave you some information on how to overcome your fear and anxiety, that you can start to change the way you do things, the way you feel about things. Just get in your Bible and um, do as this video said, have a different approach to all your anxieties and fear because you have to give it to the lord you have to dismiss it out of your atmosphere and give it to him because he can make all things happen better than we can and once you start trusting in him uh you're going to have peace and joy and love come into your heart more than when you first started when you were first saved okay it's a process it's going to go over time as you be sincere and every day, like the video says, live every day the, to the fullest. Don't worry about the past. Learn from it, but let it go. And the future's not here yet. Tomorrow's not here yet. So live today to the fullest. Do the best you can to make your day great. And, and when it is not great and there's issues, like it said, rise your head up and give all the glory and praise to God and give your problems to him. This will change your life, people. It really will. So thank you for watching today. Come back next week for our next lesson. God bless you. And my name is Sandra from Source Outreach Ministries.